What's up, peoples? This is Monica Okami. Long time no see. I'm back just so I can tell you all the things that annoy me about Cute Cut Pro. Uh, it's a it's a good program, okay? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on it too much because I think it has a free version and a paid version. What I'll be using throughout this video, I believe, is the paid version. I think I remember paying for it, although I can't remember what the difference is. Like, I honestly don't know because it seems like a lot of people on YouTube use all the same features I do, so I'm not sure what I paid for. Probably a dumb thing to do. So what I've been using the program for so far, I've been doing basic editing with my speed arts for TikTok. Just, you know, cutting the video, speeding it up, slowing it down. So it's very easy to use the program for simple things like that. But what I'm trying to do in this video is to animate a picture. Also, by the way, this picture is a draw this in your style. So shout out to Holly Wally TV on TikTok, because this is her character that I'm animating. I noticed early on when I tried to use uh, Cute Cut Pro that most of the tutorials on YouTube are by, I'm assuming, children who don't want to share their voice. And, you know, that's fine, you know, kids, you know, if they're making content, I would prefer their face and their voice and everything, you know, not be on the internet for their own safety. But at the same time, you think at least one person would use this program to animate something. And, you know, they have an iPad, which has a microphone in it, and they're using the program Cute Cut Pro, which is what I'm recording this audio with right now, so it's like, there's no excuse for there not to be a single video on YouTube with a voice tutorial for this program in the context of animation, because of course there's tutorials for like, video, vlog editing, but that's not what we're here for, okay? So I'm gonna make the animation video with a voiceover because there is clearly a need for it now this video is sort of gonna be a tutorial but it's also sort of just me complaining about what i wish the program had because you know i'm coming from adobe after effects and what we're doing here is basically motion graphics okay or parallaxing which in animation is like we're taking a steel image and we are morphing it over time so that it looks like it's moving. Now, we're first gonna have to isolate each part of the image that is going to move. So you will see me in Procreate editing my image. Now, you don't have to use Procreate to edit your image. You can use any software that has an eraser and that you can export something as a transparent PNG. So when I say transparent PNG, I mean it has no background. I will be able to put it into this program and move it on top of things without it having like a white background, you know? So we edit our image. I am isolating the hair, the eyes, the eyebrows, the mouth, different parts of the hair. So like I want the front hair to move separately from the back hair. And I think I'm also going to do the bows on the mask. So this is my first attempt, honestly, at uh, trying to animate in this. Well, I say first attempt. I've tried before, but I just did not understand the tutorials I was watching. So those didn't really go anywhere. But with this project, I actually, like, make an animation. So this is the first one. And I think it turned out okay. But in the future, I would, you know save myself the step of isolating the images. I would just make the different pieces on separate layers. That's definitely the faster way to do it. But if you do make the mistake or like want to do an old artwork, you can do as I'm doing and just, you know, duplicate the layer a bunch of times and then erase all the stuff you don't need, isolating each part. So I'm kind of like doing cleanup instead of you know, you can just make all the different parts on separate layers and it'll save you time in the long run and then you won't have to do this. So now going into Cute Cut Pro, I'm going to be bouncing around talking about different things that I'm doing and I will try my best to zoom in on the parts I'm talking about 
so you don't have to like strain your eyes trying to see what I'm doing in the program. So go to the layer that you want to animate, double tap, and then you'll have your like editing panel at the bottom there. You're going to click the magic wand looking thing and then it's going to come up with another tab of editing stuff and you'll click the plus sign. Now on the plus sign, you're going to have the option to do a custom transition. Now once you have activated the custom transition in your layer, you can move your layer to where you want it to be or you can make it bigger or smaller. And you can also rotate it if you touch the corners. The first triangle is going to be where the image starts, and then the second triangle is where it ends. Now, this is going to be the first thing that kind of bugs me with CuteCut Pro, is where the triangle ends is where it stays. So if you want to make like a perfect loop like I had hoped to do with my image, it's kind of frustrating because it's going to stay where it left. So if you loop the animation back, it'll end where it ends, and then it starts where it starts, and it's just not seamless. Um, so let's play it back again. You watch my whole process as I start to move and animate this lock of hair. We activate our custom transition on the layer, which is the little blue bar that I'm going to move in a second. So I move it closer to the front of the layer, you know, further in the timeline, so I'm animating something that happens first in the beginning. I'm going to change the hair from the starting position, so the front triangle is where the image started, and the back triangle is what I'm affecting, so you see my little marker there is on the second triangle, so I'm animating where the hair goes. Now I've added another custom transition. So the beginning triangle of this transition actually saves the place of what I just edited. So in between the last triangle of the first transition and the first triangle of the second transition, the object will stay the same. So now that I've moved the original position of the hair, I'm now trying to like get it back to where it was. So it has moved away from the shoulder and now I'm trying to get it to move back where it started, which is a challenge because in this program, you cannot set the animation to go back to where it started, which is a little frustrating. There's no measurements or calculations you can type in. Even if you wanted to, let's say, export the animation of the video, and then put the video back in. There's no way to set a video to reverse. So like you could animate it moving forward and then reverse the video so that it looks like it moves back into position. There's no way to do that within this program that I'm aware of. Like I said, I'm not an expert. This is the first time I've made an animation with this. So if any of you guys are experts and you know how to do the things I'm trying to do, let me know in the comments. Educate us all. That's what we're trying to do. So what I've been doing to try to get it as close to where it started as possible is I've been using the like transformation box as a guideline. So I know that all the transformations within the program are typically the size of the image. So I kind of look at where the box originally was and guesstimate my way back to where it is and you know I undo the tilts I make it large again if I shrunk it down or stretched it and I just try to get it back to like the size of my original image so another thing that bothers me about animating in this program is the custom transitions cannot move on top of each other so if you start with one on the right side and then you create one on the left side you cannot move the one on the right side to the left side. It is stuck on the right side of your new transition forever. Like, you just can't move them. Which, if they could just move, it would make things so much easier because then we could, you know, copy the transition because you can copy the transition. And then you could have it move back to where it started. So, 
let's say you copy the transition, then at least that point, it, it would take you back to the original position. It would, it would, oh my goodness, you could have all the perfect loops that you wanted. But yeah, as far as I know, you're gonna have to like copy and paste the layer a million times, remake the transitions, just struggling to get it back to where it started. It's, it's very inconvenient compared to other programs where you can like type in a coordinate and then you know that's the exact position that it was in. So another thing that this program can't do yet, but hopefully they make some changes. Maybe they'll see my video and be like, wow, you know what, we can improve our program. But maybe that's wishful thinking, because you know, it is a good program for the price that it is, especially those of you who use it for free. Like you can't really complain about free, heck. I used Windows Movie Maker for years and, you know, I don't hate that program because, you know, I used it, it was free, it did what I needed it to do, and so does this program. Like I said, I use it for pretty much all my TikToks, so I'll, I'll complain and hope that they improve it, but, you know, we'll see. So again, another problem that I wish they would fix is that you cannot copy the animation settings to another layer. That would be so cool, cause like you can do that in Adobe After Effects. So let's say I animate something doubling in size and then going back to normal. And then I could just copy that animation to the next image. I mean, like the selection is already the same anyway in the program, like all the images are the same square size, even if the PNG is super small, they all are the same big box that envelops the whole image. Like, when when I was doing work on the eye, you know, the eye is such a small part of the village, uh, sorry, the eye is such a small part of the image, but it still has this big old selection box that envelops the whole image it just it doesn't make any sense like if the selection box is gonna be that big why not make it to where you can copy the animation onto other layers that would be awesome but it might be a little too intense for this program so you know wishful thinking and another thing about the selection box being so big and the fact that all of them are the exact same size it's a little annoying because you can't tell what's selected, so like I always move my layer when I first uh, select it just to make sure I have the right thing selected and then I click undo so it goes back to where it was. But yeah, it's just, just, a, little, just a little nitpicky thing, like it's not a big deal, but it's a little annoying. So at this point the program actually crashed on me in the middle of editing my video. Now, normally I would freak out about this, but thankfully, QCup Pro actually auto saves. Um, it's always nice when a program does this, so this is definitely like a pro, all right, versus a con. Like, this is a very, very good thing that the program does. And I like it because, you know, sometimes when you're playing a video game or you're working on an art project, you don't always remember to save as you're going, and it's, like, I don't know why every program in the world should do this, like, we're getting to a point in society where I think it's becoming a more standard thing, but I am so happy that this program does this. Like, 10 out of 10, no complaints here. It does suck that occasionally it crashes, but it doesn't happen often enough for me to complain. Like, this is definitely one of my bigger video files. So I can understand why it would crash during this video, but you know, for my short TikTok videos, it really hardly ever happens. So right now I am fixing a small little thing that's bugging me. There's a point where her hair is moved to a place where this small white speck appears and I don't really want to go back into the drawing and edit it, so I'm changing the animation to where that speck is covered. 
And while I was doing this, I realized that in Cute Cut Pro, they have an undo button that's very, you know, it's at the top, it's very easy to find. But I don't know if they have a redo button. Does anyone know? I'm assuming they don't, but I could be wrong. Alright, so here is a thing that I thought was going to be a problem, and it wasn't. I actually found a workaround for this. So here I have the two bows on the mask. So I wanted to animate them together, so I left them on the same layer in Procreate. But now that I'm trying to animate them together, I realize that it would be easier if they were separated. So I was like, how can I do this in the program so that I don't have to go back to Procreate and create two different layers for each bow? So what I did here is I duplicated the layer in QCut Pro and then I used the crop tool so that I made each bow by themselves. And then I was able to animate them separately. So yay, QCut Pro has a couple workarounds within the program, you just gotta figure out where they are. <laughs> now, this is my last and final complaint about the program that I wish they would change, and it's when you do a custom transition. Afterwards, let's say you want to edit the clip that the transition is in. Whatever edits you do to the clip, whether you're just cutting and removing a part of it, or you're scaling it, it's gonna affect the animation. You can't just like, let's say I animate the first half of a video and then I decide, you know, the second half that's not even animated, I wanna get rid of it. I wanna cut it, I wanna remove it. The second I remove it, whatever size it decreases by also decreases the animation. It it makes no sense and I don't know if I'm articulating this well. I will try to find video footage to show what I mean, but it's a, it's a very frustrating part of this. So hopefully we'll get some kind of patch that fixes that if there's any development going on with this app. I have no idea when the last time there was an update. Heck, I might need an update now, and I don't even know. I think it's about time I wrap up this video. I am doing the last of my animation, where I am uh, creating these, like, sakura petals, and I am duplicating the layer over and over again, and I'm rotating, I'm moving them across the screen, um, initially, I think I had them blowing the wrong way because the hair was going one way and the petals were going another, so I fixed that here. Make them bigger, smaller, turn them around, try to make the petals look different enough while still using the same layer. And I think it turned out pretty well. So yeah, then you just export your video, hope that it loops okay, even though mine definitely did it, but you know. It was my first try, and after doing it one time, I think I can do it better next time. I think I can get a better loop now that I've kind of talked with you guys about my issues with the program and how I think I might be able to fix them, but, you know, practice makes perfect, and us artists, we gotta make the best with the tools that we have. Now, of course, I could go on my computer and make some awesome animations, but I kind of like working from my iPad. I like being able to sit in bed or go to the couch and be able to edit my videos. It's pretty cool. I hope all you future animators learn something from this video. And hey, leave a like because I voiced this over. <laughs> Good luck finding another uh, Cute Cut Pro animation video with a voiceover. Yo, are we gonna end this right at 20 minutes? Crazy. Leave a like, subscribe. I don't know when my next video will be, but if you guys have any ideas, I would love to make more YouTube content. I guess I could always re-upload my TikTok videos. I've been pretty consistent about those if you guys wanna check me out over there. 
Now I gotta go decide what song to put in this video. Ah. Bye bye.